I'm here with uh, Gavin Shepherd from the Media Trust and also Michael Grimes and uh, Claire White to talk about the uh, Digital Mentors program, um, which has been subject to much discussion by anybody interested in uh, social technology in local communities. And the Media Trust has uh, just given some details, and I think this is the first interview with Gavin to uh, give us a little bit more. So outline the program for us. Oh, well, it's certainly the first uh, interview to, uh, to outline more details. It's a very exciting program. We're delighted to be leading it. We're going to start with some research into the kind of communities that um, may benefit from this type of, uh, of project. It's all about the communities themselves, addressing isolation, addressing deprivation. So it's not about uh, pioneering fantastic new technologies necessarily, uh, but about how communities can uh, use technology as a catalyst to talk to each other, to talk to influencers, other communities, decision makers, um, and really feel some sense of empowerment and having their voices heard. Uh, once we've done the research to start with, we're going to open a fund programme that we've uh, grants of between 1,500 and 14,000 pounds uh, for community groups to be able to use technology and, and to set up projects themselves. Uh, and then there'll be a small grants programme of uh, 500 pound grants to allow individuals connected to those projects to be able to take them forward and make media projects. Uh, and this is going to be in the background of uh, some national support guides and resources to, for communities and organisations looking to develop social media, digital technologies to ad address isolation and deprivation in our communities. So it'll be a, a, a pretty broad programme and we hope something which everybody can get involved in and, and can chip into. So Michael and uh, Claire, there's been a lot of uh, discussion over the last few years about how the programme, perhaps the past few months, about how the programme might operate. What sort of questions do you think people that are working at local level might have um, about the programme now? I guess there'll be a couple. I mean, one of the major things that was developed, as you saw over the process, was a kind of a, a new connection of people who are working in this sphere. Um, so I guess there's two questions. How, how do you see the projects kind of adding value to the projects that have been, you know, do you see this as a way of kind of um, doing a bit more development of information? Or, and, and the second question is, um, how do you see those people who did get involved at, at the bidding stage? Um, how would you see them participating? And um, at what point do you see them participating? Is it straight away or is it once you're later down the research process? Uh, there's absolutely um, a need for people to get involved as soon as possible, I think, in the research and in where we're putting the funding and so on and so forth. We, what we don't want to do is replicate things that are already there. So if there are networks set up um, of social reporters and so on and so forth uh, that are existing, we want to tap into those networks, use those networks and, and hopefully use digital mentors as a way of of bringing a bit of focus to the work, perhaps bringing it together, sharing best practice and ideas. We want it to go beyond the projects that we're funding. You know, we're going to fund 26. Uh, that's a reasonably small number. Um, and whilst I think it will give us a good idea of going forward what kind of things work and what kind of things don't work, as importantly, um, that on its own is not going to change the landscape of digital technology in, in communities. So certainly what we want to do is, is to be able to work with people and, and talk to people about the stuff that they're doing and use these projects perhaps as um, figurehead projects and, and, and hopefully areas of best practice for people to connect with and learn from and also motivate people to go and, and use this technology and develop these projects elsewhere. Michael, what's in your mind about Well, just thinking, you're, you're talking about using groups that already use technology to some extent. In, in the communities? In the communities. No, not necessarily. I mean, right. I think we what we'll be interested in is um, to look at uh, groups that have already got a connection with a community um, that want to use technology to enhance that, that connection um, or people who perhaps have experience of a technology um, who want to use that to reach out to a community. So for example, if I give you a quick example of that, it might be that um, you know, a local library already has a, an, an online access programme um, but isn't working with a particular group uh, perhaps of um, a Polish minority, for example, I live in Reading, there's a big Polish minority. Um, perhaps they're not reaching out to those people and they want to use this fund to, to extend their work into that community. Um, so it's, it's those kind of things. It's either community-led um, or, or, or technology as a basis, but it's absolutely about what the communities feel they need rather than us parachuting in ideas or experts to, to kind of 
jivying them along. Yeah. I mean, how, how are you going to find them? Because you've got you've got various levels of, of grants. You've got five hundred pounds, forty lots of five hundred pound grants for communities. Yeah. That's that five hundred pounds sounds quite low, and I, I guess there's probably a good reason for that. I'd like to know what the reason is. There's also uh, some quite large grants, and I'm just interested in what you're imagining they might be, the kind of things they might be, and how you're going to find them. Well, we, we want to build and use our existing networks as well to find the, the projects. Um, we're going to do quite a lot of work around identifying groups that are already um, have these contacts with communities. And again, it's not just about groups that have the, the technology impact, but groups that are working on the ground with communities, perhaps in different ways. What's, what's the difference, though, between a large grant and the small grant? What, what are you trying to get out of the big ones, and what are you trying to get out of the small ones? We're trying to get the same out of all of them. Um, well, well, the reason for having small grants and large grants, I mean, the, the main grants are going to be between 1500 and £14,000. Pounds, and we really want to understand, as a, as a result of these, does it require money? You know, can you get as good a result out of £1,500 pounds as you can out of £14,000? Pounds? Um, and, and that'll be useful, because this is all of one big pilot project, so it'll be useful for the research to, to, to ascertain that. Um, the £500 grants are going to be about people, individuals perhaps, connected to those projects who want to take it to an, a stage forward, perhaps set up a digital uh, photography exhibition or a, a Facebook group or whatever it might be, to be able to take the, some elements of what they've learned and what they've experienced and take it forward on their own to create kind of little case studies in their own right that we can take forward and use to inspire other individuals and other communities. But it's, it's actually all about the communities and what they want to do. Bye -bye.